Hey, good morning, everybody. If you don't mind, let's get to our feet if we're able, and let's go greet one another. Let's make everyone feel welcome today. So let's take this opportunity to greet and say hi to everybody while the countdown finishes. Use the restroom, grab a cup of coffee, whatever it is you may need. But let's just take this time to make everybody feel right at home. Everybody feel welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the live broadcast of the exciting Thrive Church. We invite you to come grow with us. No matter which campus you're joining us at today, we are excited you're here. We especially extend a warm welcome to our online members. wait for our celebration to begin. Please take a moment to like and share our live broadcast on Facebook or YouTube. If you're a part of our online campus, please leave us a comment to let us know you're here. celebration is about to begin. Please grab your seats and text your friends and family and ask them to join you online as we now go live into the exciting Thrive Church. We are glad you're here. 
Good morning, Thrive family, and a very special good morning to our brothers and sisters in Christ from the Greater St. Paul Baptist Church. Oh, Dr. Franklin and your beautiful family and your church family, we just want to say thank you so much for being with us as a part of our United in Christ service today. Hey, this is a really, really good day. And all of our Greater St. Paul brothers and sisters in Christ, we just want you to know we're so glad that you're here. You honor us by your presence today. We're just so glad that we get to get together. Oh, what a good day this is. If you don't mind, all of our brothers and sisters in Christ that are in-person campus and the many that are with us that are online campus, please go ahead and share this feed. That's right. There's people right now who are part of our online campus at thrivechurch.tv, on YouTube, and on Facebook. There's people all over the place that are a part of this service today as we gather to worship one person, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, folks, we cannot lose for winning. So we ought to be the happiest, smilingest bunch of people you could find anywhere. Our Christ Jesus has risen from the dead. He has forgiven our past. He's given us and rewritten a glorious new future for us. Jesus has changed our destiny, our eternal destiny, our destiny here on earth included. We ought to be the brightest, smilingest bunch of people you'll find anywhere. And I know that we are today as I take you live into the exciting Thrive Church. Can somebody this morning shout amen? amen. Now, wait a minute. I thought I was in the church of the living God. Can somebody this morning shout amen? amen. Can somebody this morning shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Oh, come on today. I'm telling you today, we have a good day. You know why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a round clap of applause. Let's give Jesus a round clap of applause today. He's worthy. Our God is worthy. He has saved us. He has delivered us. He has restored us. He has healed us. He has made us whole. Today, our God, through the person of Jesus Christ, has made the way for us, folks. He's made the way for us. Amen? We serve a way maker. We serve a way maker that can get us out of anything, can get us into anything that's good. I'm telling you today, we have it made. When you've got Jesus, listen, if you've got Jesus, just raise your hand real quick. That looks like a lot of Jesus in here. Okay, all right. We got a lot of Jesus today, don't we, friends? Well, we got it made, folks. Today is a really, really, really good day. And this morning, I have the great privilege and the great honor of introducing my brothers and sisters in Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ, from the wonderful Greater St. Paul Baptist Church. Come on now, let's put our hands together. Dr. and Mrs. Franklin, we are so glad y'all are here today. We love y'all, and I'm telling y'all, I just listen, I woke, I woke up this morning. And when I woke up this morning, I was smiling from ear to ear. I just was so happy. I thought, oh, we get to worship today with our brothers and our sisters today. Amen? Man, what a good day that this is. And so we are so honored by your presence today. We are so honored by you being in the house with us today. I know that Dr. Franklin has a wonderful on-time word from God. Amen? Amen? It's going to be a good day, everybody. I'm telling you right now. So I need you to do something for me that's super, super, super important. There you go. Come on. That's what... Where you been? That's what I need right there. Come on, crack her up a little bit. Mm, come on now. I just, this, we're going to have church today, folks. Amen. We're going to have church today. Amen. Y'all think I got out of bed and fixed my hair and put on this hot coat so we could just come in here and mess around? Lord, no. Today we're going to have some church, right? Thank God for his people. Man, you, you just, if y'all wanted me to be quiet, you shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got the victory. Oh, uh, say, no, you, you did good. You did good, but we're going to try one more time. Say, neighbor, you don't hear me. 
I really got the victory. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Without any further ado, y'all didn't come to hear me. Without any further ado, I'm going to ask the wonderful folks from Greater St. Paul Baptist Church that are going to lead us in worship this morning. I'm going to ask them to come on up. When they get done with worship, I said, look, we ain't going to do no preliminary, nothing, nothing like all that. We want to have church today, okay? All right, formalities are for politicians, okay? We ain't doing all that today. We just going to have church. So I've asked them if they'll come on up today. When they get done worship, leading us in worship, Dr. Franklin is going to come up here and preach the word. Dr. Franklin, I'm glad you're here, sir. Come on over here. Come on here and give me a hug. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Will you give God a great big hand clap of praise? Amen. As happy as Mark has expressed that he is that we are here, we are happier <laughs> to be here with you this morning, to worship and praise our God, to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. A few members of our male chorus is here. And they're going to bless us this morning with a song service. We're turning into the hands of Brother Hamilton, Sister Hamilton, and the men of Greater St. Paul. Get me behind. 
God bless you. Come on, give these men a great big hand. Amen. Didn't we sing good? We sang good. Didn't we? God bless you. Listen, we're going to ask our men to come on down and transition. Our praise and worship uh, ministry is coming up. I want you to know that um, we are continuing our 11 o'clock service at Greater St. Paul. So before we get to the end, some of the members might tip out just to get that service started. I want you to understand that that's not because we're not having a wonderful time in the Lord. Uh, we have a preacher that's preaching for the first time at Greater St. Paul this morning. And so we want to do all that we can to get there and support him. Uh, amen. Even as we enjoy this fellowship today. Coming on to the stage now with our praise and worship ministry. Amen. God bless you. Yes, Lord.
worship is for real? Anybody worship for real? If you believe and you know that your worship is for real, let's start right here by giving All right. Worship Christ.
God bless you. Come on, the greater St. Paul Praise Worship Ministry. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you again. We greet you in the grace of God and the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are thankful for both of these church families, Greater St. Paul, for your uh, coming to share with us this morning. And we are honored to be here at Thrive Church to share from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a blessing and an honor it is uh, to have a friend like Pastor Mark Smith. We recently met and became close friends, and, and I'm just happy to be here sharing with him and Sister Smith. Thank God. If there are any other ministers or pastors, preachers in the congregation, we do honor and acknowledge you. Thank God for the officers of the church and the members of this church, visiting churches. We praise God and thank him for both of these music ministries, for the technicians. And I want to make sure that um, uh, you recognize that I, I came in here with a beautiful young lady. <laughs> and I plan to leave out here with her. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Miss Karen Franklin, would you please stand? God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Um, we uh, want to invite your attention uh, to a very familiar passage of Scripture that is recorded in the Gospel as Mark records it. And I want to live for the sake of time simply that 23rd verse there. And I want to encourage you as you have an opportunity to go back and read the entire ninth chapter of the gospel of mark we'll breathe a word of prayer and then we'll dive right into the word of god our god and our father it is with sincere heart that we bow before you this morning god we come for no shape form or fashion but simply to give your name praise and glory for god you are so worthy of our praise and we thank you, God. Last night you watched over us as we slept and slumbered. And early this morning you allowed us to rise once more clothed and in our right mind. God, we thank you for the privilege of worship. And God, as we give our attention now to your word, we pray that you'll open our understanding. Help us to hear and understand your word, God. And then help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. Father, we pray your blessing upon all of those that duty binds us to pray for. And we pray that this service be pleasing in your sight. For we ask it now in Jesus' name. And every heart said, amen. amen. For the sake of time, I want to lift verse 23, which says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And for a few moments this morning, I want to talk to you about endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. In this text, the Father has come to Jesus. And he says to Jesus, my son is sick. He said he's got this spirit in him. And this evil thing is on the inside of him. He's cutting himself. And he's throwing himself into the fire. He's destroying himself and everything around him. He's sick. He can't help it. He's sick. But he's still my son. If you can do anything. And that's when Jesus says to him. Jesus says, if thou canst believe. Listen what he says. All things are possible. To him that believeth. Endless possibilities. Jesus said all things are possible. A healthy nation. A happy nation. A whole nation. A humble nation. If thou canst believe. A healthy community. A happy community. A whole community. If thou canst believe a great school, a great neighborhood, great churches, if thou canst believe. 
Let me pause parenthetically to say I met your pastor. We were together at a school board, I, I mean, um, an OPED meeting. Uh, we were actually at the board meeting of OPED, and we were discussing an, uh, an economic issue related to this community. And I, I could see his heart for development, for economic development. I, I could see his passion toward bringing businesses in. And that's what we are doing over at the old head office, trying to get businesses to come into town so that we can build this economic community, so that we can develop industry and we can develop and grow businesses that are here. And I, I, as I was preparing this message here, I, I, I was saying to myself, boy, Mark and I need to know this. We need to know that with Christ, all things are possible. Our community can grow. Businesses can be drawn in. We can support the businesses that are here. We can have a thriving business community if we can believe. In our text today, when Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration, the record is that the multitudes ran out to him. Some scholars suggest that they ran to Jesus because they could see a glow of his countenance that remain on his face. This glow occurred while he talked with Moses and Elijah up on the mountaintop. It caused Peter to say, Lord, it's good for us to be here and to desire to build three tabernacles there on the mountain. But God let Peter know this, Jesus is my beloved son. And it wasn't time to build a tabernacle on the mountain, so they were sent back down uh, into the lowland. And as Jesus comes down, the text says that the crowds rush to see him. They rush to meet him, to be close to him. There is a glow about Jesus. There's also a similar glow on Moses in Exodus chapter 34. When Moses is on Mount Sinai and receives the tablets that, of the law, the commands of God. And the record is that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, his face was shining. His face was shining so much that Aaron and Miriam got scared. They were afraid to come up to Moses because of that shine, that glow. What am I saying this morning? I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, when we spend time with God, when we will humble ourselves and fast and pray, when we will seek God sincerely, when we lay out before God in humble submissions, many times you come away with a glow. Many times you will come away with a sparkle in your eye. The deacons of the old church understood that when they, they used to do the hymn, shine on me, shine on, on me. I, I wonder if the lighthouse will shine on me, oh, shine on for the senior saints that amen uh, there was a glow there was a, there's a shine on Jesus that draws the people to him and in these few verses I want to talk about three things real quickly first thing is a difficult situation then I want to talk about this dumb spirit and then I want to talk about the disciples shortcoming I, I want to tell you in this text there is a difficult situation 
It is a difficult situation, a destructive situation. It is a desperate situation, a depressing situation. Can you hear it? This father comes to Jesus. He is hurt. He is frustrated. He comes to Jesus. He is overwhelmed. Listen what he says as he encounters Jesus. He says, my son is sick. Can you help him? Jesus doesn't run from the difficulty of the situation. I like that about Jesus. Like the personal or the professional first responders, he doesn't run from difficulty. He runs to the difficulty. How fast, you might ask? Well, the Bible says he is a very present help in the time of trouble. How long does it take him to get there? Not long. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were here today, they would tell you before the heat could get in the flame of the fire, he'll be right there. He's a very present help in our times of trouble. Uh, the Hebrew boys, my brothers and sisters, are a witness to the power of God in difficult situations. James 1, James says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And sometimes when you find yourself in difficult situations of life, you ought to rejoice in the Lord because that's just another opportunity to demonstrate your faith. That's just another chance to say, God, I don't know what's going on, but I know you are still on the throne and you have all power in your hand. There is a difficult situation I'm glad to report this morning that we serve a God, my brothers and sisters, that overcomes difficult situations. There was a difficult situation, and in the text, in verse 17, it declares that there is a dumb spirit. The father says of his son, he says, there's a dumb spirit that has my son. And that word dumb in the Greek is a word called aloha. He's not referring to the fact that he is intellectually slow. He's speaking to the uh, idea that this boy can't talk for himself. And so the father has to speak for him. He says there is a dumb spirit that has my son. He has a grip on him. And that's another way of saying that the devil had control of this young man's life. The devil had taken control of his body and caused him to harm even himself. Satan had a stronghold on him. His life was withering away because the grip that Satan had on his life. The father saw his son being destroyed and he cried out to Jesus. Can you imagine how that father felt? He had probably given his son all the love that a parent could give a child. He had probably raised him upright. Probably had him in church every Sunday morning as a child. Grew him up Taught him the way that he should go. He probably had high hopes for his son. But Satan got a hold of him. How many know today, my brothers and sisters, that we have to stay prayed up in this present day and age? Because just like Satan got a hold of him, Satan can get a hold of you too. I want to have, I got a witness here. When we see so many young people in our world today involved with drugs and alcohol and gangs and promiscuity, we are observing Satan's stronghold. When we see this lack of self-respect, not only from our youth, but the truth is from too many of all ages are disrespectful, hateful, vicious, and violent. When we see this, we are, seeing, we are witnessing Satan's stronghold. When we see this disregard for humanity, violence in the streets, in the homes, in our schools, in our businesses, in our parks, and even, yes, in some of our churches, when we see this evil going on, it is evidence that Satan's dumb spirit is still trying to kill, still trying to steal, and still trying to destroy. Too many of us, my brothers and sisters, are falling victim to this, this dumb spirit. So there's a difficult situation. There was a dumb spirit. But then this speaks directly to the church today. There is the disciples' shortcoming. The father says to Jesus, I took him to your disciples. 
I took him to the ones that you had left in charge who are supposed to be able to help him. And they could do nothing. I hate to say it today, my brothers and sisters, but too many times in our churches, uh, we are focused on the wrong things. When you read this ninth chapter again, you'll notice that before Jesus comes down, there is an argument going on between the disciples and the scribes. Uh, they are debating, they're going back and forth about religious issues. And this is evidence, my brothers and sisters, of the same problems that we have in many churches today. The problem is we spend too much time majoring on the minor things and minoring on the major things. Too many times and too many of us are busy posturing and positioning ourselves for power and relevance. Too many of us are like James and John who want a closer position to God simply for the sake of the position or the title. While our sons and daughters are hurting. We are seeing programs and activities fall by the wayside. While we strut around the sanctuary, all dressed up on the outside and messed up on the inside. Too many programs have fallen by the wayside. Look at our church. Look at our communities. No mentoring programs. No development programs. No grooming programs. No support programs, no help programs, no healing programs, no educational programs, no training programs, no trade programs, no craft programs, no building boys ministry, no glowing girls ministry, no senior citizen serving ministries. All of these programs that were once a vital part of the church have fallen by the wayside. And in the multitude, someone is crying out, my son is sick. My son needs help. My son needs the power that the church is supposed to have. Oh, my brothers and sisters, right here is a good place to say thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the one who can heal our soul's diseases. Thank God for the one who speaks peace to our troubled hearts and minds. Thank God to the one who can delete our demons and destroy Satan's strongholds. I heard him say in his text, bring that boy to me. Uh, I come by to tell you this morning, Thrive Church, that there are endless possibilities to those of us who can believe in Jesus. We can still cast our cares upon our Christ because he cares for us. We can still, my brothers and sisters, do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Finally, as I rush to close, I want you to notice what I learned from the text today. I learned that even in difficult situations, even where there's dumb spirit in control, even where we as his disciples sometimes fall short, Jesus never fails. I learned, my brothers and sisters, that through Jesus, the divine will of providence still goes full circle, bringing down the wicked and lifting up the meek and lowly. I learned that through Jesus, Demons are defeated and the wicked habit is broken. Through Jesus, the winds of rejuvenation blow a refreshing breeze upon the weary, the wounded, and sad. I learned through the text today, my brothers and sisters, that through Jesus, the long dark night of despair meets the morning light of hope and one can sing with invigoration, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. 
So I come by this morning as a friendly traveler, Thrive. I come by to encourage you. I come back by to fellowship with you. I come by to love you and let the love of Christ bind us together in a strong community of Christian love. I come by. I come by to tell you that you have some friends around the corner that pray for you as you pray together for us. I come by to tell you that there's other soldiers on the battlefield holding high the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. I come to tell you that with our Christ, we can do all things. Children can laugh and learn. Communities can love and lift one another up. The candlestick of hope can light the path of the lost. There are endless possibilities if we can believe. He died for our sins, was buried in a barber tomb, but early one Sunday morning, he rose from the grave, stepped out on the resurrection ground, and said, now all power is in my hand. I have the power to overcome the situations and circumstances of this world. I have the power to say, as I whispered to that male course before we started, we're going to sing victory is mine. Because Pastor Mark stood here and declared the victory. And I thought it'd be a good way to start out. Yes, victory is ours. If we can believe in Jesus Christ. May God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer for you. Brother, I, let's give the Lord a round of applause for this. I'm tell, wasn't that a good word? Wasn't that an on-time word? Ain't Jesus good? Amen. I think we just need to go over there with y'all at 11 and we just keep on going. I tell them we're going to have us a Holy Ghost come apart and just keep on moving. We'll, and we'll get the other churches across town. How's that sound? Dr. Franklin, we are so honored to have had you you and your, your lovely bride, the first lady of Greater St. Paul with us today and your wonderful congregation. Thrive, let's give Greater St. Paul a round of applause today for being with us. Wasn't this wonderful? Wasn't this wonderful? Will y'all come back sometime? If you, if you guys will come over to us, we'll come back. Oh, we will. We will. You ain't got to tell us twice. We'll be there in the morning. So that'll be great. We're looking forward to it. Well, everyone, listen, uh, we don't want to. We know y'all got to go. Um, but I'm going to ask real quick as we close our pastoral team. Y'all come on up. Come on, pastoral team, come on. That means you. Come on. <laughs> so our pastoral team today, we're going to close, but we always want to be able to meet the needs of the people. Amen and prayer. So if you have a need in any way whatsoever, um, if you have a need at all for anything, we want to be able to minister to you today. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's restoration. Anything's possible. Oh, I love that. I'm going to go back and watch that again. That was good. I can't wait to watch this again. And there's so much power available to us today, the church. And so we just want to encourage you, if you have a need of any kind, our pastoral team is going to line up down here. And this is for anybody, everybody, by the way. On the way back to Greater St. Paul, just get you, get you a little touch if you want to. That's fine. Get you a little touch. Amen. And thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And listen, and isn't our first lady over here wonderful too, by the way? I, I wanted you to come up here so everybody can say hi to you. So, you know, I thought, man, this is a good day. It, is. it was a wonderful day. So, listen, we're going to do the, the blessing here. And so, if you would please rise with me for the blessing if you're able. Let me get real simple for you. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, everyone. Go in peace. Thank you so much again, Greater St. Paul. We love y'all. We love you. God.